Whatever you may be feeling on a particular day, remember that the true love, the love that's something that you do, that's a decision and a promise. And the love uh, that leads you here today to make these vows, that's something that's guaranteed. I have been feeling so excited and I'm not gonna cry. Very emotional and very in love. I'm so excited to get to see you two build your future together and I wish you both never ending love and happiness and on behalf of my whole family I just want to say that we love you and welcome to our family Rocco. Just gonna unconditional faithful love to her and um, she can keep cooking the amazing meals that she eats and I promise I'll always eat those so that's two promises. All of a sudden I see this girl come out with long blonde hair and I said to myself, holy shit, he's got Taylor Swift moving him. <laughs> I said, Little did I know he's gonna wind up marrying her. So he did better himself. I didn't think he could, this kid, but he did. They've given me a lot of hope and pleasure and, and uh, they're, they're just the greatest. I couldn't wish them any more than I am wishing them tonight. When a man says a woman is good for her, when we can come home after being angry at work and dealing with customers or dealing with coworkers we can't stand, dealing with whoever the hell we don't want to see, we can come home and actually communicate with your loved one, your spouse, and you can be happy with that person, and that person can be good for you, that is an absolute blessing. It's love at its finest. And when he told me that, I knew that you were gonna soon be my sister. I knew we would soon be here celebrating this love and this union. And I just cannot be more happy for you guys. Obviously, I know I'm, she's the one that I want to marry, but man, this is this is for real. <laughs> yeah, this is for real. I don't, I don't know if having me against this window is a good idea, but am I right? I love his Italianness as much as I complain about it. I love his Italianness. I love his thoughtfulness. He's so thoughtful in the things that he does and the ways that he loves me. Long before it all got started, I've been feeling so excited and I'm not gonna cry. Very emotional and very in love. And grateful to have Rocco for the rest of my life. It's been almost seven years that we've been together that I knew from the start, from our first date, from our first chat. <laughs> okay. I remember the moment that I knew he was the one. We were out at McGregor's and Henrietta after work. We went out on a date to shoot darts that I won, of course. And then we, we talked about how there was something going on between us and put it out in the open and what we were going to do about it and how we were going to move forward with it. So. It was a really, really amazing memory. I'll never forget that. I think I kind of like, I didn't trick him into saying it, but I asked him like, are you gonna ever tell me that you love me? Because we've been together now for like, all of what, three months or something like that. <laughs> I love his Italianness as much as I complain about it. I love his Italianness. I love his thoughtfulness. He's so thoughtful in the things that he does and the ways that he loves me. I promise to give you all of me, all of my heart, all of my soul, forever and ever. Uh, moved up here, you know, I was trying to 
you know, just get my feet planted and what she was doing the same, actually, and she lived up here already. She was getting set up for the job she has now and I was briefly working at Garber Honda, just finding my way around. And uh, she actually got in an attitude with me the first time she met me and told me my phone number was invalid because I had a 347 area code. And I guess people from Rochester don't know that you gotta press one to dial an area code because you guys don't have to do that up here. So. She told me it wasn't my phone number. I laughed at her. We got into like half of an argument, and ever since then, we just we kind of kind of hit it off. The decision was made a long time ago, you know, and I, nothing's gonna change between us because of how long we've been together. And you know, it's like we are married already, but the bond obviously is gonna be stronger now. And I, I wouldn't pick it with any other person. Like that, that's a fact. She's completely different than anything I grew up around. I grew up in Brooklyn my whole life. You know, 30 years, born and raised moved to Rochester on an accident and uh, saw Elisa and she was just completely different than, than the culture down there. I, I tell her all the time, she's my little hillbilly. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm her city guy and it, it, she's just, you know, they say opposites attract. And uh, I guess your gut sometimes is right because it was right this time. I love how much of a compassionate, empathetic person she is. Besides how beautiful she is and all the obvious things, she truly has a good soul and it even comes down to in a profession of you know just she's an empathetic person she always you know no matter how down and out somebody is she finds the good and you know tries to show them that and you know brings them happiness and you know she that that's her in a nutshell everything that i do and i'm that i'm into and that i want to take on she's just 100 percent supportive there's never any flack any feedback you know she'll talk it out with me and you know if a project i'm looking to take on or you know a new position at work she's she's just she's always there and she always seems to have the right answer and it's not something she's making up so feeling up to today you know i was the very, very, you know, nonchalant Brooklyn tough guy. Oh, it's, it's nothing to get a change. It's a wedding. You know, we'll be fine. It's just a party. We've been together for six years. And then within probably the last 48 hours, I've come to realize that I could live on four crackers and two hours of sleep and, you know, 72 hours probably. So, yeah, the, the marriage jitters are real. It has nothing to do with who I'm marrying. And it has nothing to do. Obviously, I know I'm, she's the one that I want to marry, but... Man, this is, this is for real. I can make one promise to Lisa. It's that I'm gonna love her for as long as I live. And that's, that's it. You know, I'm just gonna unconditional faithful love to her. And um, she can keep cooking the amazing meals that she eats. And I promise I'll always eat those. So that's two promises. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Rocco and Lisa, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends. As today, in the, in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this, your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. I could drink off my hands. Oh, yeah. I was getting ready. Yeah, I could just pour them into my mouth. up when I saw all these cameras, I was like, whew. Yeah, like that made it here, like I didn't expect it. My mouth was like cotton. I had to. I took actually three. Wow. <laughs> and I'm good. Amazing. Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Now I'd ask everyone to be seated and for uh, Sharon to come forward for the first reading. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Live on in my love. You will live in my love if you keep my commandments, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and live in his love. 
All this I tell you, that my joy may be yours, and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Have a seat, please. So Lisa and Rocco, first of all, let me say congratulations to you both. Um, what you're about to do uh, with God's help is, is, it is a great accomplishment, an impressive and even uh, maybe difficult thing to do. You're about to uh, commit to a life of loving each other, and your uh, consent to being bound to each other is what makes the marriage happen. You're the ones who uh, accomplish that today. And so as you know, you're the ones uh, that are really kind of doing all the work uh, here this afternoon. The rest of us are here as witnesses and most of all uh, to support you and to pray for you uh, and for your life together. And you'll need uh, plenty of prayers and support. It's not uh, going to be easy. The commitment that you're going to make uh, now is a commitment to lifelong sacrifice. And maybe that's uh, not the best news that you're going to hear all day today. But it's the good news that we heard in the gospel and in the other readings that, that you chose to have read today. In everything that we just heard, the Lord is showing us that being blessed, being holy, loving, living well, being happy, all of these amount uh, to the same thing in the end. You know, we heard that love is patient and kind, that it rejoices in truth and bears, believes and hopes and endures all things. And we heard that it's not uh, jealous and pompous and rude and self-seeking and all of these. Uh, and all of the things that love is, then you'll notice, uh, are things that we do or things that we don't do. And that's because love, uh, in the first place, isn't, uh, isn't a feeling. It's an action. It's a decision. And that's the decision that you've made and to which you're about to commit yourself for life. And so uh, when things become difficult, you know, feelings can change. But the vows that you make today can never change. The decision that you make today will always be with you. And so we don't need to uh, wonder if your love will last. Whatever you may be feeling on a particular day, remember that the true love, the love that's something that you do, that's a decision and a promise. A and the love uh, that leads you here today to make these vows, that's something that's guaranteed. So to be personally holy in all of the ways that we heard about, all of the ways that love was described, it's not easy. In fact, uh, without uh, God's help, it's impossible. But uh, where will that help come from? What will it look like? Well, uh, you two are lucky. You have an answer now to that question. Starting today, God's mission for you is to serve your spouse. And his help in fulfilling that mission will come to you most of all through each other. So when you wonder where God's help is, well, you already know the answer to that. And so your path to holiness and to happiness leads through each other. And your responsibility will be to see that they reach that same happiness and holiness along with you. And so your love for your husband, for your wife, it's supposed to show all of us uh, what love can be. And in fact, it even shows us what Jesus' love for all of us uh, really is. It's something uh, that's uh, that much more visible to us, something that we can see right in front of our eyes. And at the same time, the, the commandment that, that, uh, that we heard in the gospel, love one another as I have loved you, that's uh, a, a call to love each other as Christ loved. Well, how did Christ love uh, us? But by going to the cross, by sacrifice. And that's the love that uh, may be hard for us to see sometimes, but we have a visible example of it now. And so that uh, is a big responsibility, from, but, but from what I've seen, uh, you guys are up to the challenge. Already today, uh, you're giving us uh, a, a witness of the truth of Christ's love for us, for his care and his plans for us. And so on behalf of everyone here today and everybody that you'll meet in your lives together in the future, I, I thank you. Uh, for that example, and I thank God for having given you the grace to do what you're about to do, and may the Lord uh, continue uh, to bless you and reward you. 
And so now I would ask everyone to stand and for Rocco and Lisa uh, to come forward. And you guys too. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's all right. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Rocco and Lisa, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. I am. I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Rocco, do you take Lisa to be your wife? Do you promise to be faithful to her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love her and to honor her all the days of your life? I do. And Lisa, do you take Rocco to be your husband? Do you promise to be faithful to him in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love him and to honor him all the days of your life? I do. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. So say aloud, Lisa, receive this ring. Lisa, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and put it on your finger. Yeah. 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 There we go. Oh, go, on. go, go, do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my turn. Yes. So say, Rocco, receive this ring. Rocco, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Your goodness will receive the God of the earth. the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. O Holy Spirit and controlled heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. He's a friend. I almost did. When you when they first started walking, like the, your mom and dad and my dad, and I heard the music and I was like, oh boy, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I was like, this gotta pass. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. Amen. 
Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings, brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Lisa and Rocco, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in, in love those he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Lisa, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And so now we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you forever. Amen. You could, you could have done better than a handshake, but that's all, that's all right. <laughs> I, was waiting, I was waiting for your, oh. <laughs> you to give us permission. <laughs> Let us pray. Please stand. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union, through Christ our Lord. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, turn around. And let me be the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Rocco and Lisa Mufaletto. He is 
your best man, Danny Quindonis, and he is escorting Salome Sunday. Everybody, grab your napkin in your hand and stand up and come to the dance floor. I want to see everybody standing around this dance floor. I'm not welcoming Lisa and Rocco in this room, so everyone standing with their napkin in the air. Please join me welcoming the new Mr. and Mrs. Rocco and Lisa Buffalo.
our dance floor. Come to the floor and dance to this next song. chair and push it in. You've won the right to dance for your entire table two times around the table. Two times. Good style over here. Alright, my friends with the money in your hand. Who is the better kisser? fall asleep together or there's no sleeping at all tonight. No sleeping. I want to welcome everybody for coming here, and thank you for people who travel very far. And uh, there's not much I could say any better in life than my son, you know, he was up against all odds, and he passed everything himself. No help from nobody. And I thought he was good, and I thought he was great. Until one day I came up here when he moved from the house he had across the street to a little condo. And uh, it, the snowstorm was incredible. And I said to myself, How's he doing this? All of a sudden, I see this girl come out with long blonde hair, and I said to myself, holy shit, he's got Taylor Swift moving him. <laughs> I said, Little did I know he's gonna wind up marrying her. So he did better himself. I didn't think he could, this kid, but he did. And that's all I got to say. I wish them all the luck and everything in the world that can be good, because they're the best. And Lisa, wherever you are, I, I am so proud to call you my daughter-in-law. Thank you. And to my son, Rocco, I just want to let everyone know, and this might be a little funny, but it's true. He, and I know Lady's going to tell me, because he does this all the time, Dad, you're not funny. He does that. But that's him. But both of our pants are falling down. So if you see him, we've been holding ourselves. It's not a Napoleon thing. It's, you know, it's just the way it is. But someone else have the mic after this. and. Just eat, and when, when do we eat? Forget all this talk and stuff. Come on. Yeah. All right. me a lot of hope and pleasure, and, and uh, they're, they're just the greatest. I couldn't wish them any more than I am wishing them tonight, and uh, it's just been, just been great to have, uh, have those two kids get married and uh, wish, them, wish them the well. Wish them well. So congratulations. And uh, we're here for a good time, so. And Sharon, Lisa's younger, I mean, I mean older sister. I'm her only sister. And I guess now I'm Rocco's sister-in-law now too. Aren't you so lucky? Yes. <laughs> Two of you. Yeah. Great. You're, you're outnumbered now. Yes. I just want to thank all of you for being here tonight on their special day, and especially to those of you who have traveled. I know that it means the absolute world to them to have so many people here all in, in one place. So Lisa and I, we have many happy, wonderful memories throughout our lives. And, and now that I've admitted that I'm the older sister, being that I'm nine years older, I can remember when Lisa was very, very little. Well, Lisa, she was such a little ham. <laughs> she was always in the center of all of the home videos. She was always running over to the camera with her smile as big as the moon, her eyes twinkling. I mean, you just couldn't resist her cute little face. True. 
she always wanted to be right in the mix of everything. And if you had a package to open, a present, like she was right there by your side ready to tear that thing open. And of course, she was going to be right in that photo. And we continue to share many more memories as we grew older from all of our time spent up at camp to our trips out to Kansas to visit our grandparents and our visits out to Nevada for the holidays to be with family. And of course, our trips down to Miami in the springtime to visit Papa and Grandma. <laughs> Remember the, the time, Lisa, that we went out with Jessica and Ray yes. to South Beach? I think we, it was a Greek restaurant. Yep. We had like so many drinks and it was great food. We had, by the end of the night, we were dancing on the tables, literally. Like it was an absolute blast. We, we had so much fun. You don't tell me this before. <laughs> so then we get back to our grandparents' condo. It was pretty late that night, and we opened the, the door to the condo into the kitchen into this humongous pot, pile of pots and pans that then went tumbling all over to the kitchen on the kitchen floor. And this is like 1 o'clock in the morning, and it made the most loud like calamity of noise you had ever heard, like ever. It was our grandpa playing a trick on us. <laughs> Earlier in that night, he told Lisa and I, he's like, you guys, you girls are way too young to be going out on South Beach. You don't, you don't need to be going out there. So this was his way to know exactly what time we got home that night. Which was past curfew. Yes. And apparently this was a little trick that had been played in previous family generations. So I guess he wanted us to experience it as well. And Lisa, I know that tonight Papa is looking down on you, and he is so extremely proud of you and proud of Rocco. Yes. And I know that he is absolutely gushing over how beautiful you look in this dress. He was a man of fashion, so he is, yes. So, one of the things that I truly admire about Lisa is her knack for rescuing animals. <laughs> you can certainly be credited yep, for bringing a few furry friends into our lives. Yep, I sure can. You call, you now. Call, you call me an animal? <laughs> now, I'm not exactly sure that the dad would publicly admit his excitement to this fine quality of yours. But we all know that you, Lisa, I do. have given him a best friend or two. <laughs> yeah. So now, yeah, I have to tell you all so that you get the idea of what, how my dad really is. The night my mom went out for Lisa's bachelorette party, well, he and Minnie, the cat, they had to have their own party. So they started off the evening with sardine appetizers. <laughs> then they moved on to their like dinner and, of course, extra treats for the cat because if they had to be partying, too, if we were all partying. So I think you, get, you can get the clear picture now on how my dad really feels about Lisa bringing in the furry friends. Yeah, even though I'm not allowed anymore. So Lisa, I just want to say how proud I am of you. You are the most caring, thoughtful, and kind, and the absolute most beautiful bride I have ever seen. I mean, yeah, right? Yeah. And so our parents always had nicknames for us growing up as kids. If, you, if they called you by your first name, you were like, who, what, am I in trouble? Well, who are they talking to? And Lisa's was Lisa Bell. And in more recent years, it's been shortened to just Bell. And tonight, Lisa truly is the Bell of the Ball. I am so happy, Lisa, that you have found your person in Rocco. And Rocco, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for loving and supporting my sister. <laughs> I have to say that from the time I first met you <laughs> till now, the one thing that has really stood out to me is your steady sense of calm. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I'm learning a little bit different today, but up until like last night, that was the case. 
Good job. Very good at calling. Yes. And, and Rocco, you probably figured out by now, in our family, our German blood can at times run hot. Yeah, not and my... you can say we have short fuses and that calmness is not really our first emotion. No. And Rocco, I just want to say that you bring a sense of calm to our family. Sorry we, 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 never, we, we never have to worry if Lisa is okay. We never have to fear if she is cared for or too stressed out or too scared. We know that you will love her and you will support her with every bone in your body. And we also know that not only will you love her, but you'll, lo you'll be there for all of us as well. And I'm so excited to get to see you two build your future together. And I wish you both never ending love and happiness. And on behalf of my whole family, I just want to say that we love you. And welcome to our family, Rocco. Yeah. <laughs> so let's make a toast to the gorgeous bride, the belle of the ball, and her new and handsome husband. I love you both so very much. Please join me in raising your glass and toasting the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Muffaletto. Toasting up to the mic like this. I want to tell you all a story. All right. When I first met Rocco, I wanted to punch him right in the face. And I'm talking about directly in his jaw. We met about 12 years ago at a car dealership, Bay Ridge Honda. I was working there. He walked in. I see him shaking hands. The fuck is this? Who is this guy? You know, who this guy think he is right now? He walks up to me with his chest sticking out of his suit, like, comes up to me. He goes, hey, how you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Like, I'm all set. So we shake hands. We shake hands, and in that moment, that energy, we couldn't win either way. We either fight, destroy half a city block, or we become brothers. And obviously, I'm standing next to this man today, we became brothers. We probably worked together for maybe 18 months, and I'm notorious for not keeping in touch with people after, like, out of sight, out of mind. If I don't text you in a month, you're probably forgotten in me. But for some reason, Rocco and I, we checked in. Every now and then, we would just check in. Hey, how you doing? How's life? What are you up to? How's it going? Slowly, those check-ins became real conversations. Phone calls, whether it be long text message conversations. We talked about real life things. And I think that him and I recognized in one another that we had a certain rage, not in a negative way, but we had a certain rage, a certain built up tension and anger within ourselves because we weren't where we wanted to be in life. And I can see that in him and he can see that in me. We were hard workers, grinders. Rocco is one of the hardest working men I can ever possibly know. But we were not content with our lives. And that, that, that kind of forced us to be really wound up. And I think that him and I saw that in each other, and it was like an instant bond. And we would vent to each other, you know? Probably saw the guy twice a year. But our conversations were, hey, what's up? And from there, it just evolved into, what do you want to do? His ambitions, his desires, my ambitions, my desires. Where do I want to end up in life? What do we actually want to be in this world? And through these conversations, he became my brother. And as time passed, it's just like, wow, I love this guy. And I have a set group of friends. And for him to, and for us to have a bond the way we have, for it to have evolved the way it has, is so genuine and so pure. And I'm so grateful for it because honestly, it never should have happened. I made a joke yesterday that our, our friendship was forged in chaos. <laughs> we, we just weren't too happy individuals, but we were willing to do whatever it took to make a life for ourselves. Now, I like to remind him because he has ambitions up to here. You know, he wants, he has a drive that is just, it never ends. And I like to remind him, hey, listen, bro, look what you've built for yourself. Look what you've done in the last seven years since he moved to Rochester on a total accident, just a whim. I'm getting out of New York, I'm leaving, I'm going to Rochester, I'm starting over. This man came here and built a life for himself, fresh start. And from what I, I know his ups and downs. I know his bad times, his good times. I've seen him at his worst. 
And it makes me feel that much better to see you smiling today at your best. It is fantastic to me. It really is fantastic to me. And hang on, hang on now. You don't get me choked up, damn it. So, Lisa, you were... <clears throat> Crying. You were the missing key. No, crying. no, 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 no way. I'm crying. No way. I'm crying. You better cry. Lisa, you were the missing key. Rocco was probably talking to me maybe a year, year and a half ago. Yeah, he loves you. Yeah, this year though. But we know, we know that. But when he said to me that she's good for me, I knew that we were going to be here in the near future. When a man says a woman is good for her, when we can come home after being angry at work and dealing with customers or dealing with coworkers we can't stand, dealing with whoever the hell we don't want to see. We can come home and actually communicate with your loved one, your spouse, and you can be happy with that person, and that person can be good for you. That is an absolute blessing. It's love at its finest. And when he told me that, I knew that you were going to soon be my sister. I knew we would soon be here celebrating this love and this union. And I just cannot be more happy for you guys. And so Mr. and Mrs. Schultz, Lisa's parents, this man, Rocco, is a protector. He's a provider. He is, like I said, the hardest working man that I can possibly know. Your daughter is safe. And if you don't believe me, you can look at his friends. Because he has, okay, okay? He has a small army behind him that can occupy countries. Like, we just take it all over, all right? Believe me. She's in great hands, all right? Rocco, I love you. Uh, I love you. I love you. Lisa, too. congratulations. I love you. you. You guys are fantastic. This is a great moment for everyone. I'm glad that you're and this came together the way it has. I'm happy that we're all going to smile together and have a good time partying tonight. So a toast. That's it. Before I start crying. Right. A toast to Rocco and Lisa. The Muffalettos. The Muffalettos.